what happens to the equilibrium price and quantity of Starbucks coffee when McDonald's lowers the price of their coffee? So this is going to come down to using a demand and supply chart. But first we need to think, if McDonald's lowers the price of their coffee, what's that going to do to Starbucks coffee? Well, McDonald's coffee is a substitute for Starbucks coffee. You want to buy one or the other, typically. And that means that if your substitute gets cheaper, more people are going to buy McDonald's coffee, less people want Starbucks coffee. And when less people want Starbucks coffee, that means our demand decreases. That's the new demand there. So when McDonald's lowers their price, the demand for our Starbucks coffee goes down. And that means that our quantity decreases. We went to the left from that equilibrium to that equilibrium. And our price also decreases. We've got to lower our price to keep what we can of the coffee crowd. What happens to the equilibrium price and quantity of Starbucks coffee when the beans that Starbucks used to make coffee from get more expensive? So who does that affect? Does that affect the demand or the supply when the Starbucks beans get more expensive? Well, for this example, we're pretending that Starbucks is the only people that buy those beans, that home beans are not affected by whatever is making these more expensive. So if it's Starbucks being affected, the people buying Starbucks don't really care. It's the Starbucks people that run Starbucks. All of a sudden, it's more expensive for them to make coffee. If it's more expensive for them to make coffee, that's going to decrease their supply. A decrease always moves to the left. Coffee gets more expensive. They want to sell pastries and stuff instead. So they go from this equilibrium here to that equilibrium there. The quantity goes down and the price goes up. You got a decrease in equilibrium quantity and an increase in equilibrium price whenever it gets more difficult to make something. What happens to the equilibrium price and quantity of Starbucks coffee when, first of all, new technology makes it easier to make coffee and people decide they prefer tea to coffee. So that's two things going on there. So first of all, new technology means it's easier for Starbucks to make coffee. Well, if it's easier to make something, that's going to increase your supply. If it's easier and cheaper to make something, you want to make more of it, and that's an increase in supply. Then on the other hand, people decide they prefer tea to coffee. That affects the demand. That's people's taste changing. If people don't like coffee as much, there's less demand for coffee. And that demand decreases, moves to the left. So overall, we used to be here. After both changes take place, we move here. Remember, when you have a change in demand and supply, you only get to know one thing for certain. What we know for certain is that this went down, which is a change in price. Price is decreasing. Whether quantity moves to the left or right dep depends on exactly how big those changes are. You know, my drawing, it moved a little bit to the right, but it easily could have gone a little bit to the left, so we don't know the change in quantity. We know that price has gone down, we don't know how quantity changed. Quantity is indeterminate, price has decreased, and that's what happens when you have both of those changes happen at once in a market.